Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about purchasing power parity. And guys, let me tell you right from the beginning, this is a simple concept. It's easy to do. It's easy to find the purchasing power parity exchange rate. I think a lot of students, when they see purchasing power parity, they think it's going to be a difficult concept. It is not. It is straightforward. Now, here's the thing. There are two general uses of the purchasing power parity exchange rate, okay? And that's why I'm going to have two videos here, okay? This is the first video. This is part one. The two uses of this purchasing power parity exchange rate is number one, to convert convert data that's in other currencies into some common currency that people understand, which is usually USD. I'll talk about that more in a second. So one use of purchasing power parity is to convert international data that's in, of course, all kinds of other currencies into some common currency, usually the USD. The other major use of purchasing power parity is it is a theory of exchange rate determination. In other words, the purchasing power parity exchange rate that you can easily find, that we're going to find in this video, okay, is oftentimes what people think the nominal exchange rate is going to gravitate towards over the long term. Okay, so over the long term, we expect that nominal exchange rate to gravitate towards the purchasing power parity exchange rate. That is, so therefore, it is a theory of exchange rate determination. Let me just tell you guys. There's some problems with it, okay? The data doesn't bear it out very well, but it is a theory that's out there that we want to understand. And there will be a part two video, actually, it's already out there, the part two video that is on that theory of exchange rate uh, determination. So let's get back to this one, okay? What we're doing is we're finding purchasing power parity exchange rate, finding that exchange rate, trying to understand what that exchange rate even means, and then we're gonna use it to convert data. Now, <clears throat> again, like I said earlier, we generally are gonna convert foreign currencies or any, any currencies around the world into USD, and the reason we do that is the USD is the most known currency in the world, and what I mean by most known currency is people understand the value of the USD better than just about any other currency besides their own around the world and why that is is USD is the number one reserve currency of the world okay sometimes it's just called the reserve currency of the world it's at least the number one reserve currency what that means is more central banks around the world hold USD as their reserve currencies than anything else and on top of that more international transactions get uh, settled in USD, even when the two countries don't officially, you know, aren't the United States, even when they're not the United States, they get settled in USD more than any other currency in the world. So again, people understand the value of the USD, and that's why we convert to USD. Now, back to purchasing power parity or buying power equivalents. Let's go find a purchasing power parity exchange rate, or what I like to sometimes call it a conversion rate. Okay. Here's how you do it. It's simple. You get yourself a market basket or another way to say it guys is think about this putting together a market basket in two different countries, okay? My two country, two different countries are gonna be Mexico and the United States, okay? In some ways you can think of the foreign currency in this video being the peso and the domestic currency being the United States. But anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Mexico and we're gonna put together a market basket, okay? It's gonna have goods and services, all right? Put together that market basket and then we're gonna price it in pesos in Mexico. Okay, to buy this market basket, this again, this aggregation of goods and services. To buy it, it takes 800 pesos. Now, we're gonna head into the United States and we're gonna to put together the same exact market basket. And when I mean same exact, same quantities of those goods and services, same quality of those goods and services as best we can, okay? We want it to be the same exact market basket. That is key for this concept of buying power equivalents or purchasing power parity, okay? So same market basket, we put it together in the United States and we price it in the United States. Oh, it's a hundred dollars in the United States to buy, or you can even think against the buying and selling price. The buying slash selling price is a hundred USD in the United States for this market basket. That's what that weird thing is. That's supposed to be a market basket of goods and services. It's kind of supposed to represent a basket, right? And then again, same market basket in Mexico, priced in pesos, 800 pesos. And by the way, you got it. That's it. That is the purchasing power parity conversion rate. That's as simple as it is, is you just price the same market basket. You have a market basket and you price it in Mexico, you have the same exact market basket in some other country. We're gonna have the United States. You're gonna price it in USD, price it in pesos, price it in USD, and boom, there you go. That is the PPV conversion rate. And if you don't know what I mean, just literally put 800 pesos over 100 USD 
there it is. That's the conversion rate. Now we're going to simplify it. We're going to get in terms of one USD because that's how we generally handle exchange rates. But that's a piece of cake, right? That's just proportions. We're just going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 100. So 800 divided by 100 is eight. So I've got eight pesos and 100 divided by 100 is one USD. Now let's just stop for a second to make sure we've got this. One USD in the United States has the equivalent buying power, okay, as or the equivalent purchasing power as eight pesos in Mexico. That's what it's saying. That's all it's saying. That's all the concept is about, okay? We have purchasing power parity. We have parity or equality, right? That's equivalence, right? In purchasing power. One USD in the United States has equivalent, okay, or parity in purchasing power to eight pesos in Mexico. That's all there is to it. That is the purchasing power parity exchange rate or conversion rate. Okay, now let's take this a step further, okay? One of those uses of PPP is to do conversion. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, hey, and again, this is just made up data just for this video, just for conceptual purposes, okay? It's supposed to make some sense, but it's definitely not spot on, okay? So it's just conceptual data. We're gonna say that the average monthly wage, the average monthly wage of a laborer in Mexico is 16,000 pesos, okay? Now, we wanna understand that. Around the world, we might wanna understand it, especially in the United States, we might understand it, but around the world, we wanna understand it. And again, pesos as a uh, currency, people don't understand the value of it as well as they do the USD. So, hey, let's convert this to USD because we wanna understand, okay, what does that mean for, I mean, that's the nominal wage. What does that mean in terms of a worker in Mexico? Okay, what does that look like? I really wanna get to their standard of living. What type of standard of living is that providing to a worker in Mexico? Now, I could convert based on the nominal exchange rate. So here's my nominal exchange rate, right? I'm going to say market exchange rate. And of course, the market exchange rate as given is the nominal exchange rate, okay? So I've got my nominal exchange rate, 16 pesos to one USD. In other words, guys, if I went to Google right now and I just said, what's the exchange rate of the US dollar to pesos? Maybe it would say 16 pesos to one USD. That's my nominal exchange rate, my market exchange rate in nominal terms, right? Of course, we live in a nominal world, so we speak in nominal terms, and so this is what Google would give back to me. Well, if I convert based on this, then I'm gonna convert this to USD, and guys, pretty easy math here, right? 16,000 pesos, you can see 16 pesos over one, you can see why I picked this data, is it would convert to 1,000 USD. So the question, and here's the key, is a worker in Mexico making a wage that is equivalent to a worker in the United States making a wage of $1,000. Now we have an idea of what $1,000 can buy in the United States, what the standard of look, living would look like for a person who's making $1,000 a month, right, in the United States. So is that the way we want to convert it? Okay, 16,000 pesos to 1,000 USD. And the answer is generally no, no. We're not getting to what we really want to know, which is that standard of living, okay? It's not going to actually be equivalent to a worker in the United States making $1,000, okay? Because this is the nominal exchange rate. It is not the purchasing power parity exchange rate. It's not the buying power equivalence exchange rate. If I want to know buying power equivalence as I convert this data to USD, I need to do it using PPP, Purchasing Power Parity Exchange Rate, okay? And if I do convert this to USD using my Purchasing Power Parity Exchange Rate, again, the math is pretty simple right here, I'm going to get $2,000. Oh, okay, got it. So, a average worker in Mexico making $16,000 basically is able to buy the goods and services for themselves that a worker in the United States would be able to buy if they made $2,000, not $1,000, but $2,000. Okay, so if I could kind of understand in the United States what it looks like to live on $2,000, I know what it's like to be the average worker in Mexico making that 16,000 pesos. Again, many economists, okay, especially when it comes to trying to figure out purchasing power parity, buying power equivalence, when we're trying to like convert that and say, okay, what does that buying power look like? What is, what's that standard of living look like? We want to use the PPP, the purchasing power parity exchange rate, not the nominal exchange rate. Hope that made sense to you and hope to see you in part two.